there seems no end, at least in the past three months, to UK government officials and business people visiting Uganda, which is a very clear sign that the UK government and these business people are here to do business, especially now that they're leaving the European Union. And I'm pleased to say that not that we were having a nap, we were actually fast asleep for 30 odd years. If you look at our trade with Uganda or Africa as a whole was something like 30 percent not long ago, is now less than 4 percent. So we are fully awake and the evidence I have to support this, that Uganda is now a radar. Um, but that needs our business community in the UK to be coming out, to be understanding the market and to be making sure that uh, uh, they develop the partnerships and the relationships that allow them to do a good business here. But for the anti-Brexit proponents, this onslaught on countries like Uganda by UK is not sufficient because UK will still need the likes of the EU. I think it will undoubtedly try to strengthen bonds, trading bonds with, uh, the, with the Commonwealth and that includes, includes Uganda. But um, um, in terms of uh, share of UK trade, uh, the, that's relatively small, so it won't be enough. They need to get their um, access to to their big markets, especially also the uh, EU27 market, on uh, terms that are not, uh, you know, um, not 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 destructive. Foremost of all sectors that the British have their eyes set on is oil and gas, from exploration to development, all the way to waste management and much more. Success for Uganda is not just about oil flowing in 2020. It is about reputable, reliable and responsible companies helping it, helping it to flow in partnership with Uganda. In Popat's own words, there has been more visits by UK government officials to Uganda in the last three months than in the last 30 years because they mean business. Samos Tumba, NTV, Business.